way back. Hello and welcome to another adventure of Kappa Miramoto Vlogs, where I am going to go stalk out a potential house that I'm looking to buy. Mitsubishi decided that they were going to put one screw, one entire screw. Now, I've never even heard of this, right? You know how the fucking rules are lefty loosey, righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? Like with a screw. You loosen it going left and you tighten it going right. That's like universal. Supposedly, Mitsubishi decided that it was a great idea to put one screw in one of their cars reverse. And not just that, they did a reverse and then they put a little notation of the change on the plastic. So in order to know that this one screw goes the other way, you'd have to look at this imprint on the plastic. Well, it just so happens that they had to recall a bunch of their cars because they forgot to put the motherfucking indent in the plastic and some dipshit when they went to go service the CVT engine were stripping the bolts from trying to go left. Once you go right, you know it is right. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I love the old Porsches. I don't know about you guys. I just love them. Freaking frog looking motherfuckers. In the last video, I know I showed you guys something that you probably have no goddamn idea what the frig I was showing you a Vermont license plate for. Well, I think I'm gonna drop the bomb on you guys and let you know what the hell that was, right? <sighs> if you're not into street legalizing motorcycles and specifically dirt bikes, there is a loophole in Vermont that you can title a bike in Vermont if you don't live in the state. Yada, yada, yada bullshit. You can Google it if you want to. I went through the process by using this company. You pay them like a hundred bucks. And yeah, I know it only costs like 70 to do it by your own, but I don't feel like dealing with the bullshit. I paid this guy a hundred bucks. I gave him the title to one of my bikes. And I, now this is where the question is. Everyone's like, what the fuck? What, what, what bike are you making street legal? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, shit. Oh, Trump. Oh, you titty licking son of a bitch. Now everybody's confused, right? Everyone's like, wait, you have a Honda Grom. Wait, you have a DRZ. Like, what the fuck are you making street legal? Oh, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. Dr dramatics have fucking built up enough, right? This guy's gonna come over because he's a dipshit. So I'm just gonna let him go before he runs my ass over. The bike that I'm making street legal is a fucking CRF 50. What? Yeah. So when I bought the CRF 50, it came with a manufacturer's statement of origin, which triggered my bedizzard. And I was like, oh wait, this bike has never been titled in my state. Which then I knew the fucking Vermont loophole was in effect. Because once the bike isn't titled, that means that you could title it in Vermont as a motorcycle and it's never been titled in your state as a dirt bike. And then once it's titled in Vermont as a motorcycle, you could transfer it over to New Jersey, right? Because once it has MC, all good. As long as it has MC and it doesn't have not a uh, highway vehicle shit. So, I sent my paperwork to this fellow, and that fellow then, uh, and a bunch of other shit, like he asked for the bill of sale, which I sent him that, and then he asked for a notarized letter, which I sent him that, and a hundred bucks, which I obviously had to send him that, or he would have never have done anything. So, he said the whole process takes around three to four weeks. One week later, I had my plate in, in my mailbox, so I was like, wow, that was freaking quick. Right now, the Vermont license plate thing does two things. One, it gives you a license plate so you could just bolt it on, put lights on it, and ride around and you're good to go. Because you're technically fucking legal. You have a license plate, all you gotta do is get insurance and you can ride. But the other thing that it does is it comes, in its separate package, it comes with a renewable one year registration in Vermont, which you could do one of two things, right? Now listen, listen fucking carefully. The first thing, the first fucking thing that you could do, you can ride around and don't give a fuck every time that you see a cop on your blatantly loopholed bike, 
you could just now 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 side note you have to make sure that like your lights and shit are docked because i'm sure the cop is gonna bust your tip every time that he tries to pull your ass over so make sure your lights and blinkers and you have a fucking mirror and shit if you're in one of those states so just make sure you got all that shit so First option, you just ride around and you don't worry about it. You get pulled over probably every single day, but you have a Vermont license plate, you have insurance, you show them your insurance, and that's good as shit. At the end of that one year, you can then, via online, fill it out, send it in the mail with this $45 check or some shit, and in the mail comes another fucking registration card. How fucking cool is that? And then it's another one year renewal and you just stick a sticker on the license plate. So you could keep doing that over and over again. The only thing is if you go to sell that bike, right? So if I was to make it my CRF 50 street legal and then one day say, I am going to sell this bike and I go to sell it. I need to have a New Jersey title because I can't transfer the registration from Vermont to someone in New Jersey and it still be street legal. They would have to go through the process again. So ideally what you would do is you would fucking take that registration from Vermont, go to DMV, the complete legit way, and say, hey, I have this bike, I want to transfer, transfer the title into New Jersey, and uh, then you have a New Jersey or whatever state title. Um, I know California is a little different because you got red stickers, green stickers, black stickers, Snickers, fucking Mexican stickers and shit. So I know that they're one of those states that like you, you have to really fucking pay attention and shit. This guy's smoking a black a mile in front of me. It smells like fucking heaven. But yeah, now you guys know my fucking ultimate plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the, the, the pink CRF 50 and I'm going to make it street legal. You know, that's going to be my winter project. So there's a part of me that wants to get rid of my Grom and just ride that thing around because I can get like 25, 2600 for this thing. And then I technically we would kind of have another Grom to ride around on with the street legal 50, um, which I'm gonna put an 88 kit in. Uh, that was just chilling like a feeling. So I don't know, I might get rid of the Grom and just ride the 50 around. Would that be crazy? I don't know, you guys tell me. Like. It would, I would still hang out with my Grom friends because obviously a 50 and a Grom are, are pretty fucking similar. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Is this guy turning left? Is he turning right? I don't fucking know. Phone connected. Congratulations. The fucking phone is connected. If you guys haven't, uh, couldn't tell, my microphone situation has changed once again. And that is because I'm a giant fucking idiot. And I'm gonna explain to you why I'm a fucking idiot. I use the same mic as Ian187, and that's because he's like the tutorial fucking master of all fucking wizards and shit. So I watch all his videos because he always has some good good tips for you guys. He's got he's always got good tips, Ian. So go and check out his videos. It's EN187. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the uh, uh, yeah is not in there, so. I watched his videos way back when I was thinking about getting into fucking motovlogging, and I was like, oh shit, I could, I could do this, this is fun. You just talk about shit and when you ride around, and I'm like, but I need a mic. And I, like everybody else, went through probably four or five different kinds of shitty fucking eBay mics before I decided, let me Google the fuck out of this, and let me listen to someone who actually has good audio which Ian has great audio. I got the same mic as him, and I think I think Fooligan actually has the same mic too. But it's like a dual mic setup. There's a mic on each end, don't be a fucking asshole. Turn left onto Silverside Avenue. Go suck a bag of dicks. Yeah, so my mic is a Sony EC3M3 tits or some shit, and it has little microphones on each side of this little T-shaped dildo thing. So the thing is you need to like put fur and, and all this other kind of shit on it to make the wind noise sound great. So I'm like, all right, cool. That That's totally okay with me. I'm all right with it. I'm using it and I'm like, this is weird. I, supposedly all these other moto vloggers, oh, sh all these other moto vloggers use the same 
same setup that I do, but my audio is just so low. And every time I try to raise the audio up, I'm getting this gainy ass fucking all about that bass shit. Just recently figured out because I was using this mic to do one of my shitty sports things. And I found out that it you have to change the channels on the mic in order for it to sound great. Well, now I feel like such a goddamn asshole that I even bought Take It Easy, the Cena, and uh, so I'm gonna re I'm not gonna return it. I'm gonna sell my my Cena backpack because that shit the the audio is just terrible. So if you're into moto vlogging, don't get the Cena backpack. I I mean I think it must just like everything else, right? The GoPro 2. If you're trying to moto vlog with the GoPro 2, the audio is just gonna suck a bag of dicks. Trying to moto vlog with the GoPro 3, it's gonna be a little better, and so on, right? So I think Lee Stewart, who's like by far one of my favorite moto vloggers. He's got to fucking step his shit up, Lee. If you're watching this, fucking start making some more. I don't care that it's cold. Fucking put your long johns on and shimmer me fucking timbers and start making some goddamn videos. It's a bad choice to ride today, dude. Freezing his nipples off. So I'm using this mic again because I really like it. I think that it sounds better than the Cena. The Cena would just randomly break up on me. Like it would go like... And I would lose chunks of my audio. So I don't know if it's just because the GoPro, GoPro 3 Plus is a little bit shittier than the GoPro 4, which Lee, Lee, Lee uses. I'm just going to stick with this fucking EC dickhead thing because I am planning on changing my camera setup in the near future. I just don't know if I'm going to get the GoPro 5 tips or the uh, Garmin or even Kodak came out with uh, Kodak. Kodak Mint. Nikon. Fuck me. Nikon came out with one that's pretty sick. I might just do what everybody else does. Like, Chase on two wheels, just buy shit and then fucking test it out. And he's like, nah, you can go suck a bag of dicks. And then, like, goes and returns it. That's how all those reviewer people do it before they start getting shit sent to them. Like, you could just go to the store, buy something, open it up, rub your balls on it, put it back in the package, put a couple pubes on there, and then freaking send it back. I guess that's exactly what they do. Minus the pubes, probably, but... The ball rubbish just definitely, definitely happens. I, I, you should, it'd be a really funny thing to do with sunglasses. You buy sunglasses, you rub your nuts all on the nose thing. I, I think the one, it's, it's in here. Oh, there's another motorcycle in here. We're going to be best fucking friends. These are really nice. I really, really like this neighborhood. There's, it's like Porsches and fucking, I really like this neighborhood. Guys, this might be it. This might be it. I think I might have just seen my first home. I hope you guys liked this video and the tips. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe. Peace out. Bitches. Ain't no telling why I'm finna be on. Hey, hey, I'm beyond all that fuck shit. Hey.